Owen opened the door to the company apartment and dropped his backpack beside the couch. Exhausted from the Trans-Pacific flight, he rubbed his neck and shuffled to the sliding glass door. Pulling back the screen, he let the sound of rush hour traffic six floors below filter into the room. After a minute of looking out over the hazy coastline, he headed to the bathroom and splashed water on his face. The mirror over the vanity reflected eyes in need of sleep, but it'd have to wait until he checked email. That and removing his large banana spider from the shower's soap shelf. The furry critter had escaped his terrarium again and taken up residence there. He snatched the arachnid between finger and thumb, sending its long legs into a wriggling frenzy. Calm down, Shaleb, he muttered. We'll have you home for you now. He walked to the kitchen and popped him back into his glass home. Now, hopefully, he said to Shelob, Robbie left me some coca tea. He felt around cans of vegetables and boxes of dry goods until he found a canister, shaking it next to his ear. He smiled as the spider pawed the pain of its terrarium. Good boy, Rob, he said, and set a kettle of water on to boil. Fifteen minutes later, he sat on the deck overlooking the street below, sipping tea with the laptop open on his lap. Booting it up, he saw a dozen emails, clicking one named Claire Albadaway, itinerary. He scrolled down the page. As he read the flight information, the memory of his conversation with the cultural anthropologist popped into his head. He smiled, thinking of the tall, silky brunette with flashing blue eyes. She had a killer smile and a pair of legs that wouldn't quit. His body stirred as the memory of her flashed before him. But what really grabbed him was her sharp, challenging and feisty mind. He liked intelligence in a woman. A taxi below blew its horn and the memory ran away. Cracking his knuckles, he pulled a candy bar out of his shirt pocket and peeled the wrapper back. As he bit into it, he opened a file he'd downloaded a while back. The screen page opened to a photo of a stepped pyramid. As one wild theory, love, he muttered, tilting his head. He stretched and scrolled down the page to her picture. You sure I want put together package? I'll give you that. Just keep your pretty little nose out of my business, and we'll get along just fine. December 10th, 2012, San Francisco, California. Hot showers always refocused Claire when bad shit happened. She turned the hot water up another notch and gritted her teeth. Since her fiancé, Jason, decided his career was more important than hers three weeks ago, she had been trying to forget him. But it wasn't easy. She scrubbed her hair as his ultimatum played over in her head. Of all the times to draw the line in the sand, he had to pick 20 days before the project started. She felt her throat tighten. <sighs> Screw it. CBS in New York can have him. I need to call Thad. She stepped out of the shower, toweled off, and marched into the closet. In the corner sat a new tan duffel bag. Next to it stood her zamber boots and a dozen pair of 150 thread ultralight hiking socks. She eyed them as she pulled a pair of nylons on, wondering if the duffel bag was big enough for all the gear she'd need for the expedition. Twenty minutes later, she pulled her Volvo out onto the arterial and after stopping at Double D's to get her regular morning bagel, turned the radio on to listen to the morning news. As she settled in for the hour-long commute, her Blackberry buzzed. Setting her breakfast bagel on the passenger seat, she dug into her purse and pulled out her PDA. Thad's number showed on the screen. Thaddeus Pompalothus, or Poppy as he was known on campus, was her research assistant. Hey, what's up? She said. You on the 880? Just getting on. Well, you might want to get off at Artesia and hook up with the 680. Tractor trailer jackknifed. Exit 120. It's a mess. Shit. Okay. She tapped her finger on the steering wheel as five lanes of traffic began slowing down. You hear anything from this guy, Owen? Yeah, he emailed back. We're all set. He'll meet us at the airport, Thad said. He cleared his throat and his voice dropped down. There's something else. What? Claire said, bracing herself. When Thad's voice dropped, trouble lurked. Noah's rethinking my going to Brazil with you.